Hi guys, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And this short video is going to deal with the construction of a grouped frequency distribution. So it's going to deal with the construction of a grouped frequency distribution uh, once you've been giving, given a particular data set. Okay. So what I have here on the, on the left hand side is a small data set. Uh, there's no particular context here, uh, but let's maybe just uh, assume that these particular uh, these particular values have been captured from a survey, and the survey was composed of a single question, where we asked a number of people how many Facebook friends had they got on Facebook. Uh, so the first person said they had 10 friends, the next person in the survey said that they had 17, and the next person 36, and so on and so forth. Okay. So what we'd like to do with this raw data, and you can see that this data hasn't been formatted in any way, there's no natural order associated with this particular data set, but what we'd like to do is construct a grouped frequency distribution. Uh, and for this particular presentation we're going to have four simple steps that are going to allow us to construct this grouped frequency distribution representation of this particular data set. Uh, and step one, uh, we're going to calculate the sample size of the data. Okay. Uh, that's how many observations we have in the data set. And we can see that we have five columns of data and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten rows, ten full rows. So we have 50 values there and we have two extra values here. So we have a sample size of 52 observations. So small n is equal to 52. Okay. Uh, the next step in constructing the frequency distribution or the group frequency distribution is to identify how many classes we should have in our distribution. So this step is going to deal with the number of classes that we should have. Okay? Uh, and there's a simple rule that we're going to use to calculate the appropriate number of classes. Uh, and the rule is called the 2 to the power of k rule where k represents the number of classes that we could have in our distribution. And to figure this out, we're going to construct a small table. It looks something like this. Okay. Uh, and we're going to list down the first column values for k. Uh, for example, we could have a distribution that has one class. We could have one that has two, three, four, five, six, seven classes, and so on and so forth. Okay. So these are all the possible distributions we could have, and we have to figure out, out of this list of numbers, what is the number that represents the right number of classes or the appropriate number of classes for the size of the data set that we're going to be dealing with. Okay. The second column we construct 2 to the power of k. Okay. So we let k be 1, so 2 to the power of 1 is equal to 2. When k is 2, 2 to the power of 2, or 2 squared, is 4. When k is 3, 2 to the power of 3, or 2 cubed, is 8. And you can see the pattern, we'll end up with 16, 42, 64, 128, and so on and so forth. Okay, so to figure out the number of classes that we should have, okay, we consider the sample size, okay, so n is equal to 52, that's what we calculated uh, in our first step, and what we do is we inspect down this column of numbers, okay, so we inspect this column, okay, until we find the first value, the first, until we find uh, the first value that exceeds, that exceeds our sample size, that exceeds our sample size. In this case, our sample size is 52. Okay, so is 2 bigger than 52? No. Is 4 larger than 52? No. Does 8 exceed 52? No. Does 16 exceed 52? No. Does 32 exceed 52? No. Does 64 exceed 52? Yes, it does. This is the first number that we've encountered as we inspect it down through this list that exceeds our sample size. And as such, we're going to assume that our distribution should have six classes. So k is equal to six. Okay, so we're nearly there. That's the second step done. 
Uh, the third step, which is really, really important, is to calculate the appropriate to calculate the appropriate class widths. So to calculate the appropriate appropriate class widths. Okay. Uh, and we have a rule that's going to allow us to accomplish that. The rule says that the width of a class is going to be equal to the range of the data set. We're going to just give it a little bit of a push out with a kicker of 1 divided by how many classes we should have. Now in our example here, the range of the data set is simply the difference or the distance between the largest and the smallest number. Uh, so the range is the largest observation minus the smallest observation. So I suppose we need to figure out the largest observation. So the largest observation in our data set, well, I mean, I know from this particular data set that the largest observation is 73, okay? But I suppose just from a, from a, a systematic perspective, uh, what we should do is we should maybe go through the first column systematically, uh, inspecting for the largest number. Uh, so let's say 10 is a candidate uh, as the largest number in our data set, uh, but 50 is greater than that. And continuing on, we can see 64 is bigger than the 50. Continuing on, the largest number, and actually 68 is bigger than the 64. So in this column, the largest number is 68. Moving on to the next column, we go down to see if we find a number bigger than 68. And what we can see is we have 70 here. So that's the next candidate largest number. And we continue in this fashion until we exhaust all of the numbers. Okay, So continuing looking for a number bigger than 70 now. And here we have 76. Okay, whoops, I think I said that the largest was 73. At this stage, it's 76. And moving on, we end up with, we end up with 76 being the largest number. Okay, so I'll just cross that out and I'll put down 76 is the largest number. And then we find the smallest number, the smallest number in our data set. And the smallest number in our data set here is 10. Doing the same process. We have a seven. There's no number smaller than that in this column. In the second column, we have a five that's smaller than seven. And we continue on. There's no other smaller number than five. And there's no smaller number than five. And finally, on the last column, we find that there's no smaller number than five. So the smallest number is, is five, okay? Uh, so now we know that the range of the data set, okay? The range of the data set, is the range is the largest element the largest element minus the smallest element okay and from our previous calculation the largest element was 76 and the smallest element was 5 so the range is equal to 76 minus 5 which gives us a range of 71 okay now to calculate the width of the classes, as we've said previously, the width of the classes is equal to the range plus one divided by how many classes we identified in step, how many classes we identified in step two, which was six. So the width is equal to the range plus one divided by how many classes we should have. So this is equal to, the range is 71 plus 1 divided by how many classes we should have, which is 6, which gives us a value of 72 divided by 6, which is going to give us a value of 12.6666 uh, and so on. Now in our situation here, this is probably one of the only times where we're going to apply a particular type of rounding strategy. What we're going to do with this particular number is no matter what, we're always going to round up, okay? So to one decimal place, it's 12.7, okay? Because that was six, six and so on. But our data set that we're dealing with is in whole numbers. So what we'll do is we'll round this to the nearest whole number and we'll round up. So we'll always round round up 
Okay, so 12.7 is approximately equal to 13 when we round up. If this was 12.1, when we round up, we would also get 13. So this is really, really important that we always round up. Okay, so now what we know is this, is that the number of classes that we should have, the number of classes, the number of classes should be six, okay? And the width of the classes, width of classes should be 13, okay? And I think we're ready to go now. So to construct the grouped frequency distribution, don't forget a grouped frequency distribution is simply a two column table. So we're gonna have a two column table. Down the first column we list the classes or the variable uh, that we're measuring. And don't forget the variable is how many Facebook friends a respondent has. So let's say this is the number of Facebook friends.